Hello there, this is game one of standard between Lorenzo Soma, one of our Planeswalker contribution patrons, and um, Jason Clark. I believe this is Division 2. I can already see the hands apparently. Yep. Here we go. <laughs> And it looks like we've got two very similar two similar decks with this at very least is blue white cycling gift and that looks like blue red gift. So it might also be um It'll also be blue red emerge, although I don't think that that would play in some neonate and walking ballista. Now the interesting thing about walking ballista is that it might actually be part of um, a certain shell that uses um, it uses the, the marionette master to bring back with gift and the um, Metalwork Colossus to sacrifice the servos made by um, made by Marionette Master when it comes into the battlefield. Sacrifice those servos and the gift itself deal 16 damage and if you've got a ballista on the field you can shoot the ballista and deal another 4 uh, well not actually damage because it's life loss but it's a certain combo variant of a gift deck. I'll see whether that's what is on because when I saw it being played, it was in fact a blue red version. Um, a gold, uh, goldfish played that's uh, like Oliver Saffron, I believe his name is. He uh, displayed the deck in one of his. These games. Wrath of Darkness will actually stop Champion of Wits from drawing any cards to reveal if Mr. Creek, aka Lorenzo, chooses to activate it, he will still be forced to discard two cards. Not sure how it works with normal removal or how it should work with normal removal, but <laughs> I think this is actually kind of a big swing. And the funny thing is that we'll actually see a champion of wits coming down for Dresser Horn here. Yeah. Uh, and it appears uh, he actually shows yes because he's saying oops and he's being forced to discard two cards without drawing two of them. Surprised he's not asking for a roll back there, but. Because I think that was just a misclick. Maybe a rollback would be fair at this point. Okay, Shoke Destuary. Which means that Tressa Horn, aka Jason, has five lands in hand, which is enough mana for gates to the afterlife. So he might actually decide to throw away some land in favor for other cards he's drawn. Which champion of wits to any creatures he might draw are likely to head into the bin. Because if he's got cyclers, he might want to keep them. And we see Walking Blister doing the same thing for Mr. Creek as Grasp of Darkness. But apparently this still works. 
because unlike with Grasp of Darkness, it is not reduced in uh, power. I believe that's also what Saffron Olaf said that I'm. Oh, Clint Mist Crane. Play. So I guess it kind of makes sense in a deck revolving around a couple of artifacts. Hollow one. That means this might actually be a completely different deck from what I've been expecting. What's the blue red discard hollow one deck? It's be interesting to see where fire manifestation is played or and the same goes for Creator of Mysteries. P.S. he'll play Vile Manifestation and likely cycle Curator of Mysteries. I think that's his plan here. And Lorenzo chooses to cycle the Hollow One. Draws an Angel of Invention, one of the cards he's probably eager to see. Discarded. And the screen coming in. I guess one of the good things with the screen is also that its ability is actually quite handy to get um, even when bringing back bringing it back to eternalize All right, we'll take a look at what will be drawn with Curator of Mysteries. Glimpness Crane failed to hit anything, and it's just a land. Now we can see there's just three cards, three creature cards in the graveyard for uh, Chasen. So we'll be able to really play K to the Afterlife now. Wait. Early First, he chooses to go and attack. If one of the Clintness screen blocks, he'll cycle the Lurching Rot Beasts. And so Neonate will be throwing itself in front of it and then probably discarding the Angel of Invention in hope of searching for a more useful card. Walking Blister being the draw here. Key to the afterlife. Leaving man open to cycle lurching rod beast at end of turn. Another angel of invention drawn here by Lorenzo. Probably not what he wants to see at this point. Walking blister for two. Makes for a decent chum blocker. I'm not sure whether that's what he wants to go for it with it for now. No attacks. 
Yes, Lorenzo is going for a more defensive strategy. Searching Rod Beast being cycled, we'll see what he draws. Curator of Mysteries. So right now we're at a creature count of five, I believe, and with another cycler the gift will be able to be activated. Strike with one and sacrificing gate to the afterlife. I'm assuming a champion of wits will be coming back here. That will increase the likelihood that gate to the afterlife. The second gate will be able to activate. Both players apparently playing Angel of Invention. Shouldn't to discard the Fetid Bulls as well, which is another cycler. Strengthening file manifestation by one. You might see a walking ballista blocking Champion of Wits here and then firing off. On my file manifestation. I am surprised that Walking Blister did not block Champion of Wits here, as it prevented fall damage. See whether or not Lorenzo is punished for this. Okay, the afterlife trigger. Something I always forget. Interesting. Instead of throwing away the land, we see the cycler being thrown away. Don't really think that there's anything uh, Renzo can draw here to get him out of this. And if there was, it certainly wasn't the second copy of Angel of Invention. Renzo not drawing the best here. And we see a concession. Game two of standard here between Lorenzo Soma, aka Mr. Creek on the bottom, and Jason Clark, aka Tressahorn, on top of the screen. This hand here is belonging to Tressahorn, or Jason, who is on blue white gift, blue black gift, and Mr. Creek is on. Is it for Ryan to deck? Interesting, the gates probably came out of sideboard. 
Sweet how will that dust brim. Somewhat clunky as it is uh, not able to stop file manifestation here. Hollow one being discarded. We choose to go for a champion of wits or keep up the negate. Goes for a champion of wits here. I believe that's the correct choice. And I believe two angel of inventions will be sent to the graveyard. This time, champion of wits was not destroyed. Fetid bulls coming down tapped means there won't be a champion of wits at this point. You will, however, be able to cycle two cards. Interesting block here. I assume he does not really care too much for champion of wits. I assume we'll see Striped River Winder being cycled at the end step of Mr. Creek's turn. No issues to go for Afterlife or go to keep up Negate. Go for Walking Ballista for two, perhaps. Perhaps one and keep up Negate. Cast it for a value of one, keeping up Nikate. Take a look at Alex's hand. We see that he does not have a gate in hand. He has another good play to make here. So just very probably coming down and then the champion of wits. To be might respect removal here. To no removal can actually deal with Champion of Witch's ability except for Grand of Darkness. See a swing here first. Blocking list of blocking. Not sure that's the best choice. Two damage does not seem to be worth it. Perhaps he's respecting the possibility of more cyclers strengthening vile manifestation into a, an actual threat. Now, although this is looking quite grim for uh, Lorenzo here, if she draws into the, into the right cards, if he draws into um, his combo, he can actually he could actually possibly go off here. I believe that was a misplay since he should have played K to the afterlife first. Will he request the rollback? Oh, I think he still should have played K to the afterlife first to get to this card and draw. And 
seems he'll be going for the Angel of Invention. Or perhaps for the Champion of Wits. Angel of Invention being the choice here, will they fabricate to put two plus one plus one counters? Nope. Goes for the servos here. Angel of Invention swinging in here for four life gain. I assume that will be met with Grasp of Darkness. Archfiend of Ifnir being an interesting draw here. We should go for the Archfiend first. Or will he deal with the Angel of Invention first? And then play Archfiend of Ifnir, hoping to cycle immediately with a one mana cycling car. By the way, in this matchup, the one who gets a God Farrier's gift first is severely pressuring the opponent. Chooses to keep up Grasp of Darkness. Which means that Negate will be able to deal with that. Send Neonate, interesting draw here. Now, Grasp of Darkness will need to hit the battlefield at this point, or um, Angel of Invention will strengthen each other and they'll become 5-5s. Five 5-5s fives. Five fives onto the battlefield. Master of Darkness can no longer deal with any of them. And that's game. Okay, um, somewhat late for game 3 of standard here between two versions of the gift decks. Got various gift decks, one being in black blue and the other being black, no, being a uh, blue red. Lorenzo on the bottom here is on the blue red version. Chooses to not play Cathartic Reunion here. Interesting choice. Keeping up the gates. See. Champion of Wits for oh, an interesting card here will be Nimble Obstructionist, who can actually deal with uh, a gift activation, uh, with a Gate of the Afterlife activation to try and find a gift. Okay, will he go for a champion of wits here? Nope, he's going for a glint nest screen. I believe I probably would have gone for a champion of wits. And then uh, perhaps play a glint nest screen with a negate as backup for the next turn. He hits a walking blister. Okay, take a look at Jason's hand. A lot less cards.
interestingly how actually putting having creatures die in this matchup is more of a boon than uh, a problem which is why champion of which just swung here even to it was obvious that you could die okay we see the champion of wits now also see a walking blister for two Tardigrim is also a possible possibility in fact with this he can even keep up the gates chooses to tap down the ether hub rather than an island not sure why hollow one can we cast here for sheep Oh, and interestingly, he shows to this card the Champion of Wits and a Walking Ballista to the Cathartic Reunion. Hollow One will not be cast. With Lorenzo Soma preferring to keep up in a gate, which I believe is actually uh, a good choice here. Oh, you see, aha, yes, so, final manifestation being cycled here, that means four, five creatures in Jason's graveyard. And I believe we will see a gate to the afterlife being cast and negated at this point. He respects the possibility of negate and passes the turn. Hollow one is cycled at end of turn by Lorenzo finds a Ministry of Inquiries. Now I believe he'll be casting Glintness Crane to try and find um, a gate to the afterlife. And he will actually be able to play Ministry of Inquiries as well and still keep up in the gate. Doesn't seem like Lorenzo is on the combo version of the gift deck. Which is sad. I like the combo version. So we'll take a look at um our opponent sand here. We assume he will be cycling striped river winder at the end of turn. It's obvious that the negate is in play here. Got to check with Lorenzo drawing, but we did not draw any artifacts. And um, yes, he shows to cycle the horror of the broken lands as well. And a cross of darkness going for the Minister of Inquiries here. Negate of his own. Does that mean he'll try and play Gate of the Afterlife? Or will he keep it up to try and win the game with Final Manifestation? Gate of the Afterlife resolving here will be such a big deal. On the other hand, if 
Lorenzo could find the gate uh, at this point after uh, the gate resolves he would be quite far ahead as well okay another glint the screen searching for a gate to the afterlife I wonder whether Lorenzo is expecting a gate from uh, from Jason here Still no hit. That is somewhat surprising that that many goodness grains still haven't hit a gate to the afterlife. We are approaching the amount of mana that is needed for it, just playing a god Pharaoh's gift, so. Imagine not being very lucky here. Yeah? They go for the gate this time. Choose to go for the gate of the afterlife. Keeping the gate up. Negate. Hitting the gate of the afterlife here. Negate, negating the negate. Negate, 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 negate. Oh! Negate being kept up here. So you choose to not go for. Activating the gate of the afterlife. Interesting choice. <coughs> Leaving final manifestation can probably take him to victory. And with the draws that Lorenzo has had, that might very well be true. So if Lorenzo now draws into gate of the afterlife, that can actually be resolved because he's got a negate of his own as backup. But then again, big problem with that. Is that he won't be able to gain a uh, walking blister here? Interesting thing is here that he has to actually ah, choose to play it for two. But he isn't going to try and kill the vile manifestation. I probably would have played it for three here, uh, trying to kill the vile manifestation in blocks. But what I want to say was that it was interesting if he did that, he would have actually needed to block and not fire off the walking blister, because that could be countered by cycling. Nimble obstructionists. Got Pharaoh's gift to draw here for Jason. Blocking with a walking blister too is not exactly what I would have expected at this point. I would have expected either Minister of Inquiries or um, just no blocks. Yes. Two damage not going to matter too much at this point. I feel like Lorenzo has really had bad luck with his goodness cranes because they put. You look at the top four cards of your library and then revealing an artifact and Lorenzo has plenty of artifacts. He's got hollow ones, he's got walking blister, he's got gate to the afterlives, he's got God Farrier's gift in there. And he hasn't been able to even get anything off of it. And it's not like playing two is bad because you can just put the rest in the bottom of your library. And you can try it again. Interestingly though, if... Yep, see an instant neonate here. Not the best of draws. Um, 
if Lorenzo can get seven mana, he can actually activate Champion of Wits, which can't be negated, but which can be stopped by cycling a nimble obstructionist. And it'll be interesting to see where they choose to go for the Godfather's Gift or respect the negate and go for um, the champion of wits i believe this game is in favor of jason here as he is better on board he has um seven mana now he can also go for a champion of wits um, he has two ways to block a gate to the afterlife activation. We see instant nanonate being sacrificed here. Yes. Nope, just um Okay. Look at Lorenzo's, and he found a gate to the afterlife. Gate to the afterlife will be coming in. It will likely be negated. But he might actually just, yeah, negate. Will the negate be negated? Gate will be negated. Now this means Godfather's gift could actually be uh, played by uh, Jason, but that would mean that he wouldn't have the mana for a nimble obstructionist anymore for cycling nimble obstructionist. So I'm thinking he'll just keep open the mana for nimble obstructionists, play it safe. But he could go for a face off between got various gifts not sure which one would be the best at that I see a block here from ministry of inquiries no blocks stride river winder cycling here Pools cycling, it's eight damage, which means it's a two turn clock. And enough mana to cycle nimble obstructionist. Yeah, this is this isn't looking great for Lorenzo here. Lorenzo activating. He probably thinks he's got the game here now because, to be honest, it looks fairly good for him. If not for the fact that, um, oh, and the gate of the top. Uh, that is actually interesting. Gate of the afterlife will sacrifice here. That will be countered by a nimble obstructionist cycle. And I'm assuming that next turn, Jason will be confident in being able to resolve his Godfarius gift. That might be net by a negate. And then following the next following turn, if Lorenzo finally manages to get that seventh land, he'll be able to play a Godfarius gift of his own. So in the next couple of turns, we will see the advantage swinging here with a, by a big deal. It's going to be very, very interesting uh, to see how exactly this pans out. Because it is also a possibility that um, Jason just goes for hitting with Final Manifestation again. Or perhaps even playing Curator of Mysteries 
in combination getting a second threat out and is also a two turn clock and cannot be blocked as easily. A lot of it will depend on whether Lorenzo draws into... Okay, he's cycling the Curator of Mysteries. I don't believe he can... He's really digging for anything right now. Oh, and a grasp of darkness. That might be what he was digging for. Uh, a removal, taking down Minister of Inquiries here. And the gate saving, um, saving the, the sham blocker here. While cycling, trying to find then a gate or a grasp. Gate to the afterlife. Okay. Now. Will we see a Godfario's gift versus Godfario's gift? <laughs> Will we see it? Come on, seventh land for the Lorenzo. Let's go, let's go. Needs to be untapped. And an island for the Lorenzo here, off the top. Godfario's gift will be resolved here, we'll be able to get back um, an Angel of Invention and we will actually get to see this game going forward here. We will see Godfario's gift versus Godfario's gift, possibly even two versus one. And we'll see who can make the best use out of these cards. I believe he must go for an Angel of Invention in order to have enough blockers to be able to survive. But regardless, his choice here will be very interesting. Angel of Invention being the pick here, probably making two servos and hitting for four life gain. Yeah. Let's take a look at Chasing Clark's graveyard here, and it is full with good stuff as well. Clark's draft for the turn. He's a curator of mysteries. He's got all six mana. It's just not enough to play the second gate. But he might actually go for a curator of mysteries here after attacking. Now, will he go for max aggressiveness? No, he's choosing to go. Oh, yes, of course. An Arshfiend of Ifnir means that he can cycle the Curator of Mysteries, weakening all of the, the opposing creatures. He chooses not to do it as a combat trick, which I believe is a waste. The blowout, sheer blowout of a possible block. Oh, and a champion of wits being a draw here. It is just not Lorenzo's day. But it is declared attacker's step here, so they won't be able to do it before attackers are declared. How will he navigate this? Choose it to swim with both. What 
will the blocks be? I'm assuming he wants to actually take out farm manifestation. So he might also just want to keep the Angel of Invention as an attacker. But if he does go for the kill for killing power manifestation here, yeah, he will lose all of his servos. Choose to go for the kill here. Yeah? Gaining an extra tree life. So, total taking forward from Ashwin to fifth near. And, uh, what is Champion of Wits to draw here? I believe probably the best thing he can do at this point is um, activating a champion of wits from the graveyard and then perhaps getting back a glint in the screen. Okay, what for those gifts? What is he going for? He's going for the Champion of Wits, shows not to uh, turn like the Champion of Wits using his own ability, and rather went for the God Farrier's gift. And he's drawn another gate to the afterlife here. Which will be very important. So we should just throw away the Ministry of Inquiries and the Eater Hub. And I'm assuming he will be playing the Clint Nest Crane and Champion of Wits. I uh, might actually see that attack being regrettable here as a second god Farrier's gift coming down and summoning two um summoning two fire manifestations will ensure a lethal attack here for from Jason. Got Farrier's gift being the draw here, and being uh, something that Clint the screen gets here. And I believe you will see well, so it might actually be just not lethal. Very much doubt so, but ah, uh, it goes for a champion of wits rather than a god Farrier's gift. I think I would have gone for lethal here. But we can forgive Alpha. Oh wait, but with tragic lesson, he will actually be discard a third card, killing Lindness Grain. And he will have Lito with God Farrier's gift. Archfiend of Ifnir being a big deal in this world. Yes, tragic lesson taking out a blocker. My manifestation probably the target. And 
the return of land and cycle strength river winder or will you choose to just he returns land cycle strength river winder and holds up the gate Okay, so you have to life triggering here for Lorenzo. God Pharaoh's gifts will be bringing back, I assume, a bomb infestation. And that does it. That's game for standard. Black blue gift destroys blue red gift in the Battle of the Eternals. I think if Lorenzo had a bit more luck, it would have been close. But man, that. Uh, that uh, Archfiend of Ishnir was just so, so brutal. Game 1 of Modern starting here with Twain Lorenzo Soma, our Planeswalker contributor on Patreon, versus Jason Clark. I believe this is Division 2 of the American League, and Mr. Creek, aka Lorenzo Soma, is on the bottom here. We'll get to see his hand guard soon enough. Whilst Jason Clark is on top. Okay, so this is Mr. Creek's hand, who is apparently on a Merfolk tribal. Oh, wait, nope. It's mono blue. I'm not sure what. What it is, so it's mono blue. Not familiar with that deck. Looks cool, but. And this is a more traditional absent lists. Path to Exile, Tarmogoyf. Yeah, absent good stuff. Grimotif, Grimotif becomes that really dark. Oh wait, that's a counter spell, it's not a counter spell. Oh, this might be a top, uh, top deck manipulation deck. Totsis. Take a look at the opponent's. Disrupting Shoal is not a one mana spell. Interesting that it shows to play Totsis with the Godless Shrine rather than the Overgrown Tomb, which means that he won't be able to play Path to Exile anymore. I believe using the Overgrown Tomb would have been a better play. Tamagoy being pumped here, because of two discards. Shows to discard Grim Artif. And that means there are now tree types in the graveyard. We see a Vendillion clique coming down here. I believe the resolve Tamagoyf will be very tough to deal with for a blue deck.
and the island of Vale being a draw here, which would have been a good card, if not for the fact that um, he's short. Uh, uh, he's got plenty of time, of course, to play though, so. Interesting, did not know that tribal was a I guess it's car type. Just never thought of playing tribal. No, no Tamagoy here from Jason. Dillion click coming down. We'll be going for a Tarmogoy or for one of the Siege Rhinos, perhaps the Liliana to fail. Should just go for Path to Exile, yeah? Which draws Jason's third land. Interestingly enough, if Jason managed if um, Lorenzo manages to keep board state as it is, he will actually be able to uh, kill Jason first because he did not pay life due to his lands. I think there's a fairly good chance of that happening. Interesting that Tonaria West was not played here. Well, I believe that might be as a win condition. We see a remand here. Wait first to counterbalance. The remand is made a lot more powerful if you can wait for counterbalance first to see uh, what it hits. Kashima, the imposter. You can actually use that to copy the and click. Which, in my opinion, sounds like a good idea. Now, if Jason draws his uh, fourth land. Siege Rhino might actually be a big deal. Fact of negation, interesting. So how does he want to do this? He's going for the Sakishima. Choosing to copy the Tarmogoy. Because <laughs> Tarmogoy became bigger since we last saw him. He's now 4 4, that would be 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 6. I guess it makes sense. Come 
counterbalance. Will it hit? It hits. Nice. That is very nice. Oh, and it's good that um, Tamagotchi was actually copied because now, otherwise, it would be a two turn clock for Tamagotchi here. Three turn clock here with Vendillion click. An abrupt K. I don't believe that can target Tsukishima. Does it? Tsukishima does seem to copy the converted mana cost as well. I can actually. He's taking down Vendillion click. Assuming, yeah, he's chosen to skip the combat phase. Let's see where uh, that abrupt decay resolves. The lights, disrupting shoal can also take care of it. We see disrupting shoal being used here. Nope. Choose to let it pass. I think I would have used the disrupting shoal here. Using the scrying sheets to get the land off top so we can draw another land. The card. Direction metamorph being the draw here. Once more, combat will be skipped. Pass to exile and an abrupt decay. Abrupt decay, will we see a disrupting shawl hit this? No, oh, it's going for the counterbalance. Okay, first counterbalance. Slant. Pass to exile. Oh, wait, yeah. Will we see disrupting shoal hitting this here? Nope. Pass to exile. Pact of negation. Oh my, yes, of course. And that is, I believe, game. Lorenzo Soma takes game one of the modern. An impressive pact of negation. Game two of modern and is 
Lorenzo Soma on the bottom here versus Jason Clark on top. We are currently looking at Jason's hand, so let's switch real quick. Huh, see, that's an interesting card. I remember Sich being an interesting uh, commander. I'm not sure how it will do. This time we do not see a turn to Tamagoyf. Instead, um, Jason's hand is filled to the brim with answers. Way the bush likely coming down. Don't think we'll see him wasting any time on this. Way to push on sich. Oh, the ferry was a draw. Okay, so now back to Jason. What was a draw? It's a ban in Inquisition of Kozlik. I was slower than um, Jason here. What will he pick? Choose to go for the Snapcaster Mage, which is the most value. Not really sure whether the fear really matters in this matchup. Let's draw for Lorenzo. Sorry, I'm a bit slow today, but we'll take a look at that next turn. Let's see us. Okay, we'll take a look at Lorenzo's hand here. Logic knot. Can you actually delve for enough? Yeah. I don't believe he can. Even if he delves for two more. Jason will be able to pay for it. Issues to a logic knot for two. I'm assuming Benza will be taken down here. Yep. Not sure I would have actually played the logic knot there. Spell snare being the target. Oh, <laughs> just on time to hit the time of life. Not sure how Renzo will get himself out of this, but. Chief coming down here, will that be hit with a path or a... I believe you can tap the Grimoire Chief with... Um, if it's being hit with an abrupt decay immediately. Denying him the fifth land that he would have otherwise gotten by a path. Snapcast an H, big draw here. Can bring back either logic knots or spell snare, so he's got the counter game on now. Hmm. 
Inquisition of Kozlek. Well, he flashes back logic notes. He can do it for four, which is not enough again. Snap gas image will be coming down here. At least he'll get the two one. Oh, and Inquisition of Kozlik is actually a converted mana cost 3 or less, so it won't actually be able to hit um, Dita Fairy. You see the logic not being activated here? Nope. Interestingly, the shambling vent will actually be able to, yes, get in here. Equalizing the life totals, disrupting sh no, um, criminal chief being the draw. Snap to get, snap to get some edge get in. Yes, that was to be expected. Take a look at Jason's hand here. Another path of exile being the draw here. Yeah? Interesting thing is that if he plays path to exile, um, Lorenzo will get his fifth land, but if he plays abrupt decay, he won't have an answer for cards like counterbalance anymore. He chooses to go for path to exile. Rumbling vent will get rumbling again. Rumbling again. <coughs> so Tiferi will finally be able to come down here for Lorenzo. Oh, that does not. Oh, Lorenzo has lost connection. Welcome. This is um, either game two or game three of Modern. Um, previous game, we've had some some problems. This is looking very much in the advantage of um, Lorenzo here. Seems Lorenzo takes down Modern. Not Game one of Legacy between Jason Clark and Lorenzo Soma is getting on getting on its way here. Lorenzo on the bottom here. We'll take a look at our player's hands. I had this card deck here with him to Torash and Bitter Blossom and stuff like that. Mono Black versus. Oh, interesting. Um, mono red deck, apparently. Let's paint a seven. Not 
sure how a painted servant will work exactly. Okay, so that was a lightning bolt hitting the dark confident. Mags of the moon coming down here. Not going to matter too much against the swamps. In fact, it might even hurt. It might even hurt um, Lorenzo here more because of the fact that his uh, two mana lands are no longer. Two, I guess, he can actually use. Oh, and all of his non-land cards, the Scarlet Painter's Servant, Pyroblast here. That is, um, I believe, the worst hint to Torash that could have be, could have happened here. Snaring bridge. See that coming down here. Miles of Lance in two. Let's take a look at Jason's hand here. Top thief. We follow that up with a Bitter Blossom or with a Dark Confident? Dark Confident being the play here. No problem at all with uh, from the from basic lands because all of it is no problem with all the the magic of the moons because they are indeed. Um. Oh, and Umazawa is just going to do so much here. I believe he was all I already had this in hand, but um, that is a lot of great cards there. Uh, that ensnaring bridge could have been useful for uh, Lorenzo here, yeah, but Simeon Spirit Guide being hard casted. It's not something you see every day. No attacks from Lorenzo. Umzala's Jitter being great card to race with. And Dark Confident creating great amount, great amounts of value. Great amounts of value. Conf um, Liliana and uh, the go, go for the throw dealing with Lorenzo's board here. See what Lorenzo is able to draw. Second Chromox, he is not having lots of luck drawing this this game or even I believe this uh, this day because uh wasn't drawing well in standard either. I believe that was this game. 
Not this much. Life gain and life loss can be bad here. Yeah? What can Lorenzo draw here? Lightning bolt, we need to do that to take down oh. that to take down the life gain. We swing it with Magus. Nope. Magus staying on defense. You do it will likely die. To Dark Confident. Uh, to Yeah, Liliana being that's actually quite a nice token. Liliana discarding what was it that was left in his hand? Swamp. Ah yeah, so he's got a wasteland in his swamp. <coughs> a dark confidence swing in here. Lorenzo blocks. His heart still triggers. Damage is still being dealt. I did not know you could waste. Oh, yes, the Magus of the Moon is dead. So now these are not mountains anymore. So Wasteland can actually start hitting them again. <laughs> Which is more important than I gave it credit for. Yep. Impressive plays here from uh, the black deck. I think it. Yeah. Came to a legacy here between Lorenzo Soma and Jason Clark. But mono black versus mono red. And I believe I now realize why Painted Servant. Was a uh, part of is because you can counter in red if the opponent's spells are blue. Uh... Oh, lightning bolt in response to a cabal therapy. It's not something you see every day. Intertorah can really be very irritating here. I'm assuming like if I saw, if I know uh, the red deck and I did, and, uh, Jason did get to see a couple of cards, if you, if you figured it out, then I believe Cabal Therapy will name Peter's Servant, which is the core of Lorenzo's deck, as far as I understand it.
Yep, so Painter Servant was the card named here. Not sure what the hold up was for that couple of minutes. And if you're wondering what that sound was, that's Facebook because um, I apparently can't. I can't uh, choose which outsources I, I've, which sound sources I get from OBS because of the the way audio is organized and. Okay, interesting. Chromebox. Not have expected that to come down here. Your recruiter probably getting painter servant, and we might see that Chromebox being very, very. Yeah. Um, no, it was not a good play. Him to Torek will fall. Ouch. Just. Nope. See what it hit. Well, at least it didn't hit the painter servant, but. Ouch. Like, you shouldn't have played the bloody Chromox. So that's going to be an interesting card here. Well, actually, it's more even more interesting with um, Liliana de Veil because it means he can, uh, like, hit hard with Bissell Persecute and then sacrifice to Liliana de Veil when he targets himself. So Liliana will apparently not survive to be able to do this. You can see Imperial Recruiter hitting the bin here. And if I am correct, yes, Painter Servant has chosen blue. Not that that's going to matter anything anymore at this point. Since Lorenzo is not drawing any of his red counter spells. That chrome box really, um, yeah, that screwed over Lorenzo playing your chrome box there. And Jatora should be a really powerful card. Chaya Ballard. Oh, yes. So Chaya Ballard can just destroy blue permanence, which means it will be able to destroy any permanence belonging to Jason now. So persecute probably coming down. Oh no, nope. first. Jason getting rid of that um, city of traders. Mountain being the follow up. Now oh, that chrome box is in fact handy. We see a concession from uh, Jason here. Uh, 
Game tree of the legacy here between mono black and mono red. Okay, chrome blocks coming down here. Huh. That's an interesting card. Choosing not to play Painted Servant. Quite yet. Not sure why Lorenzo didn't play anything at that point. Okay, so now he can play the Painted Servant and keep up Red Elemental Blasts. See whether he wants to He'll allow the Dark Confident to trigger once. Dark Confident fetches another Dark Confident. Will we be seeing an Innocent Blood into the battlefields or a Hymn of Torak? Torak. Okay, is that going to be met with the Red Elemental Blasts? Red Elemental Blast hitting the Innocent Blood. Not ideal, but... Now a Hymn to Torak going for maximum value. And I think that's pretty much, yeah, Mono Black winning the value game. Oh man, that is so harsh. One card in hand versus... Uh, well, four cards in hand and drawing two per turn. That is just... Mm. Not one card in hand is a painted servant, so... So to hold up is here. Perhaps Jason is deciding whether he wants to attack, to I don't think that that would make any sense at this point. Uh, might just be having quite a bit of lag. I can't type. I seriously can't type. Second painter servant coming down here. Marks of the moon pen is still in the deck. Uh, by an 
Nighthawk. Brilliant creature. Imperial Recruiter for Lorenzo here. Will he fetch Shia Ballard? If so, can he find a second red mana needed to play it before the Vampire Nighthawks deals too much damage or Dark Confident? Runs away with the game. Goblin Welder. Oh, so we can go and fetch and snaring bridge. Our confident fits in the Bissell Persecutor. Bissell Persecutor. Interesting. Oh, and I think it'll be in the draw for the turn. So you can just name the Goblin Welder. And that's gonna stop the ensnaring bridge plan. Now, if Lorenzo manages to draw well and uh, manages to deal with any way for um, for Jason to stop uh, to kill his own abyssal persecutor before he dies to the dark confidence. We might actually see um, him being victorious here. So I'll take a look at what he drew for the turn. Grindstone. Oh, and 